It's a long story. One of the bodies of work I'm showing at the biennial is a story called The True Qian, and it's a Chinese story, okay, a folk story. It's a Zen story, actually. So you have to imagine, it's ancient China, and uh, there's a little girl called Qian, and her father is a widower, um, and he sees that she's, she's growing up, and she's a bit lonely. So she adopts a little orphan boy, and he be that little boy becomes her companion. They play so well together that the father says, Qian, you know, I think you and Huang should marry someday. He was only joking, but they took it to heart. Um, so when Qian turned 18, the father went off to the big city, came back and said, Qian, this is wonderful news. I have got a husband for you. Of course, he had completely forgotten about what he'd said. Qian and the young man are absolutely heartbroken because they really did fall in love and they felt that they were betrothed to each other from a little age. So the young man just, he can't bear the idea of living in the same village as Qian anymore. So that night he decides to pack up his boat and move to the next province. But Qian loves him and she runs after him at midnight and says, Huang, I love you. I will defy my father and come with you. So they go off, they go to the next province. They marry, they have children. They're actually very, very happy. They really do belong together. But one morning, inevitably, uh, Qian wakes up and says, husband, um, what we did to my father is awful. He must be devastated. We have to go back and make amends. And the husband, because he's such a good man, he says, okay, come on, we'll pack up the boat, we'll go down. And I'll go <coughs> to my father-in-law's door first, because he's going to be really angry, and I don't want you to receive any of that anger. Let me carry that anger. So he goes up to the, the father-in-law's door, knocks, um, and the father-in-law comes out, but instead of of being angry, he goes, nephew, thank God you've come back. I'm so glad to see you. And the young man's going, okay, um, I thought you were gonna be really angry because of how Qian and I ran off. And the father goes, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Qian has been lying in her bed since the night you left. She hovers between life and death. We don't know whether her spirit has gone from her. We don't understand what's gone on but she has not risen from her bed these last five years. And the young man goes, wait a minute. Your daughter is down by the river. She's waiting by the river, by our boat. But the father says, look, I don't know what you're talking about, and takes him to Qian's bedroom. And sure enough, she's there, ghostly pale. And it is Qian. So the husband is now very confused. And he says to the father, you have to come down to the river because Chen is there and we have two beautiful children who are your grandchildren. And the father, of course, is like, what the hell are you talking about? But follows him out, crosses the threshold. And for the first time in five years, Chen from the bedroom rises up and the Chen from the river has become so impatient and worried for her husband that she decides to come up from the river. And the two Chiens meet outside the house and embrace. So because this is a Zen story, you have to figure out there's a question. And the question can't be resolved by your head. But the question is, who, which one is the true Chien? The one who stayed behind or the one who went off with her lover? If you say one or the other is true, it's not true. But you haven't, so you have to figure it out. But it is about how we, um, we, you know, in any choice we make in life, we leave something of ourselves behind and something else steps forward. Um, some dilemmas are painful and some not so painful. But it's an incredible story about how, well, the, the response to this koan, this story, is one about wholeness and it has to come from your heart. And it's about you being able to embrace the 10,000 things that are inside of you.